And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. At breakfast tomorrow, try this. Pour out a bowl full of crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Add milk or cream, top with fruit, and get set. Yep, get set for the keenest, swellest tasting breakfast ever. Now, did I hear you say, look, nothing could be that good? It couldn't, huh? Well, just you try Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice tomorrow, sure. Joe Atwood was dying. The elderly mine owner lay propped up in bed on the second floor of the log building which served him as both home and office. His lawyer, Henry Morton, had drawn up a chair at his bedside. Joe's nephew, Paul Lamar, hovered solicitously over the old man as lawyer Morton spoke. Joe, I hate to say this, but there's no use dodging facts. You may not have long to live. For heaven's sake, lawyer Morton, is that any way to talk to a sick man? Uncle Joe may be a little under the weather right now, but he'll soon... Never mind all that hot air, Paul. I know I'm dying. <coughs> What's the use denying it? Go ahead, Henry. Say what you have to say and get it over with. Well, it's about Tom. I've told you I don't want that boy's name mentioned to me. Now, calm down, Joe. Oh. You can't bluff me with that kind of talk. Tom's your own flesh and blood. Yeah, oh you may pretend you're through with him... But deep down inside, you know Tom means just as much to you as he ever did. That ingrate. I had his whole life planned out for him. A life of ease and security. But no, he has to go herring off into the bush prospecting for gold. Well, I'm not going to argue with you, Joe. <laughs> then stop arguing and get to the point. Well, after you and Tom had your bust up, you disown him completely. You made a will leaving everything to Paul Lamar here. Well, why shouldn't I? Paul's been a loyal, obedient nephew. Not like that worthless son of mine. Well, I'm not saying anything against Paul. But don't you think it's high time to reconsider that will? What? Well, maybe lawyer Morton is right, Uncle Joe. Perhaps you are being a bit too hard on Tom. Now, don't you start nagging at me too, Paul. Well, be sensible, Joe. Even if you won't change your will... At least make your peace with the boy while there's still time. It's Tom's place to come to me and apologize for the way he's acted. If he did come here, would you be willing to talk to him? Uh, I won't say I wouldn't. I won't say I wouldn't. You know where, where Tom is now? Last I heard, he was working a piddling little claim on Siwash Creek. Very well. I'm going to write a letter to him, telling him you're ill. If I know Tom, he won't lose any time getting here to your bedside. Bust up or no bust up. Paul Lamar pretended to be in favor of Lawyer Morton's plan to bring young Tom Atwood and his father together. But actually, he was furious at the lawyer's interference. Later that same day, he went to the Monte Carlo Cafe and talked to a shady character named Bull Hagen. Hey, what's up, Lamar? Did old Atwood finally cash in his chips? No, he didn't. What's more, it looks like I may not inherit the mine after all. Yeah, how come? Atwood's lawyer is trying to effect a reconciliation between the old man and his son. He's written a letter asking the kid to come home. Yeah, that won't be so nice for you, Lamar. What are you figuring on doing about it? The old man is pretty far gone. According to the doctor, he can't last more than a few days. 
If Tom doesn't show up in that time, Uncle Joe will think he doesn't give a hang. And the will will stay just the way it is. Yeah, but suppose the kid does show up. That's what I want to talk to you about. What do you mean? It'd be worth $5,000 to me to have Tom Atwood held prisoner somewhere so he couldn't get to Dawson. 5000 bucks. That's a lot of money. How about it, Paul? Where is the kid? He's got a claim on Siwash Creek. That means he'll probably get the letter from Lawyer Morton in another day or two. I got a pal named Whitey. He's been holed up for the last few weeks in a shack on the edge of Ghost Canyon. Tom will be coming right by Ghost Canyon on his way to Dawson. You could grab him and hold him in your pal's shack. That's right, I could. But Whitey will want something for his part in the game. You can cut Whitey in on the 5000 Uh-uh. Nothing doing, Lamar. That five grand is mine. You'll have to make your own deal with Whitey. All right. We'll go talk to Whitey tomorrow. I'll tell Uncle Joe I got business down in Selkirk. Urgent business. <laughs> It was Sergeant Preston who delivered Lawyer Morton's letter to young Tom Atwood. Looking! Hi there, Sergeant! Hello, Tom. How's everything going? Well, this trick's not exactly as rich as Bonanza, but I guess I can't complain. <laughs> Hello there, King, old fella. <laughs> hey, come on inside and get warm. Huh? I have a letter for you, Tom. A letter? Well, who the dickens would be writing to me? Here it is. Oh, thanks. Uh, do you mind if I read it? Go right ahead. I'm going to warm my hands over the stove. All right, Sergeant. Yeah. Oh, no. It's from Lawyer Morton. About Dad. Not bad news, I hope. Well, he says Dad's pretty sick and hasn't much longer to live. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He wants me to come back to Dawson and see Dad right away. He'll go, of course. Oh, I'll go, sure, but... The question is, will Dad have anything to do with me? Well, certainly you will, Tom. If I know your father, he'll be only too glad to see you. Well, that's what Lawyer Morton says, but I'm not so sure. You'd uh, better not lose any time getting started. If you leave right away, you can be in Dawson by nightfall. All right, Sergeant. Oh, will you be traveling with me? I'm sorry I can't, Tom. I've got to see a man over on Pine Creek. Well, when you do get back to town, come around to Dad's place. Maybe you can help me make my peace with him. Uh, that is, if... Several hours later, Paul Lamar was talking to Bull Hagen. The two men had gone to the shack on the edge of Ghost Canyon, which was occupied by a bull's pal, Whitey. Now they were waiting for Tom Atwood to pass by on the trail, 20 or 30 yards in front of the cabin. Whitey was standing at the window. Boy, oh boy, look at that snow come down. You think the kid will show up today, Lamar? Maybe. Maybe not till tomorrow. It all depends on when he receives that letter from Lawyer Morton. Hey. Somebody coming up the trail right now. He's on snowshoe. Hey, what's he look like, Whitey? I don't know. He's a little too far away. What? That could be Tom from his general appearance. Wait till I get these binoculars in focus. Yeah, how about it? That's him, all right. Look, I'll duck out back until you get him under control. Once you get him tied up, you can stick him down the cellar till I get away. It looks like he's not going to stop. He's going right on fast. Come on, Whitey. Let's go get him. Better holler at him before he gets too far away. Hey, sourdough! What do you want? Hold on a minute. We want to talk with you. All right, you take your crappy. I'm in a hurry. We got some news for you. News? What about? How about this? Put up your hands. Hey, what's the idea of the gun? You're coming along with us, young fella. Now, look, if it's gold you're after, there's a poke in my right-hand pocket. Go ahead, take it. We'll attend to that later. Now, get moving toward the cabin. For Pete's sake, take my money and let me go. My father's dying in Dawson. I've got to get there as soon as possible. Now, ain't that just too bad? I said get moving. I say no. Oh, watch it, Bull. Oh, no, you don't. Sergeant Preston was driving along the trail on the opposite side of Ghost Canyon. As the report of Bull Hagen's gun echoed faintly across the canyon, King stopped in his tracks and pricked up his ears. <laughs> yes, boy, I heard it too. That was a gunshot and no mistake. Take a long time to get over there where that shot came from, but I think we'd better investigate. All right. On your feet. Two hours later, after circling the canyon, Sergeant Preston arrived in front of Whitey's cabin. Looking. The snow had completely covered Tom Atwood's tracks. 
and there was no sign of the violence that had taken place. The scene was one of wintry peace and stillness. The sergeant knocked on the door of the shack. Well, hello there, Monty. What can I do for you? I'm Sergeant Preston. Mind if I come in for a minute? Shucks, no. Come on in. Make yourself at home. My dog usually sticks pretty close to me. Any objection if he comes in, too? Oh, I guess not. Quiet, King. Uh, not a very friendly pooch, is he? When King growls, he usually has a reason. By the way, I don't think I caught your name. Uh, Hagen's the name. Bull Hagen. This is my partner, Whitey. Howdy, Redcoat. Glad to know you. King and I heard a shot fired somewhere around here. We were over on the other side of the canyon at the time. Either of you two fired that shot? Why, yeah, I did. Anything wrong? No, no, not a thing, Sarge. I just happened to take a pot shot at a rabbit, that's all. Oh, going to have rabbit stew for supper? Oh, going to know. I missed the critter, didn't I, Whitey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. You missed him a mile. Too bad. Rabbit stew's mighty tasty. Well, I just thought there might be trouble of some kind. It's the only reason I stopped in. Since everything's all right, I'll be on my way. King's sensitive nostrils had caught the scent of blood. The great dog was sniffing at a large wood box which stood near the stove. What's the matter, King? That husky sure is suspicious. At times, I wish he could talk, and this is one of them. What's in that box? Wood, naturally. What'd you expect? I'm just wondering why King's so interested in it. Nothing else in it but wood? See for yourself. I guess you're right. Come on, King. Uh, how about stopping for a cup of coffee, Sarge? Won't take long to make. Why, no thanks. I think we'd better be moving along. Sorry I bothered you. That's all right. Think nothing of it. Bye. Go on, sir. Holy mackerel. That sure was a close call. Yeah. If he'd have looked under that wood box, we might have been in real trouble. (laughs) But luckily he didn't. We'll continue our story in just a moment. You know, I had a dream the other night. I'd been out to a baseball game that day, and man, oh man, that umpire made me so mad I could have... Here I be! Hey, up, you robber, you! What was you saying, buddy? Oh, my gosh. The umpire. How... How did you get up here all of a sudden? Never mind. What was you shouting about? Out with it! Shouting? Oh, (laughs) well... Maybe I was shouting about wheat or rice shot from guns. What's that got to do with it? Oh, oh, you've heard about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, haven't you? They're the famous ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns. Okay, okay, so they're... Exploded. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. What's more, they're shot through and through with bang-up flavor, too. Listen here, buddy. Stop raving. Say, I can't stop raving about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Those king-size premium grains are so crisp and tender, they just melt in your mouth. Mister, if you know what's good for you... Do I? Boy, oh boy, just give me a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. You get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Oh, you make me see red. You mean red and blue. Yep, to get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, look for the big red and blue Quaker package. For a nourishing breakfast treat, buy Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston and King had heard a shot on the other side of Ghost Canyon, but when they arrived on the scene, there was no sign of violence. Bull Hagen told the sergeant that he had merely been shooting at a rabbit. As the sergeant and King left the crook's cabin, Bull and Whitey watched them through the window. Hey, what's going on out there? I don't know. Preston has stopped the team. Looks like that big lead dog has found something. Holy smoke, that's just about where Atwood was standing when you shot him. That confounded dog is too smart for his own good. (laughs) Meantime, King was scratching at the snow. What is it, King? Something buried there? Suddenly, a dark patch appeared in the snow. King growled. Hold it, fellow. Let's take a closer look at that. 
the right thing that's blood hastily the sergeant began clearing away the snow with his hands he soon uncovered several other large patches of dark frozen blood so bull hagen just took a pot shot at a rabbit eh? We'd better go back and investigate that wood box a little more carefully, King. All right, boy, light him up. On King! On! A moment later, the sergeant halted his team outside the cabin. Back so soon, Sergeant? Yes. King made a rather unpleasant discovery out there on the trail. We saw you poking around in the snow. What'd you find? Several large patches of frozen blood. Any idea how they got there? Well, I, I don't know. I told you I took a shot at a rabbit. Yes, and you also told me you missed him by a mile. Well, I guess maybe I was wrong. I must have wounded the critter without knowing it. That's pretty thin, Hagen. I think King and I had better take another look around that box. Suit yourself. Come on in. Do all the looking you want to. Thanks, I will. Here's something right here that might interest you, Monty. I take it you mean that gun you're holding. That's right. Get your hands up high. Don't let that dog make any false moves. If he does, I'll plug him. Steady, King. Turn around, Monty. Now I'll just relieve you of your gun. <laughs> yeah, that's better. I keep him covered, Whitey, when I go for some rope. Bull Hagen got several pieces of stout rope. Then he came back and tied the sergeant's wrists securely. <laughs> I guess I ought to hold him. Now, what are we going to do about the dog? Tie him up, too. That's easy to say, but who's going to do it? Take a look at that mutt's fang. Money will make him hold still. Go ahead, give him the order, Preston. Sorry, but King doesn't like to be tied. Go, fellow! King sensed his master's command almost before the words were spoken. He dashed out the open door. Get after him, bull! Hey, go shoot! Now we missed him. He's out there in that brush somewhere. Think we ought to hunt him down? Ah, let him go. He can't do us any harm. What about the money? What are we going to do with him? I've got a hunch Lamar will want us to kill him. Now, you stay here and keep your eye on Preston. I'll start for Dawson right away and tell Lamar what happened. Right. And before you go, you better drive Preston's sled around back of the cabin. Somebody might see it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. As Bull Hagen drove the sergeant's team to the back of the cabin, King lurked watchfully among the trees and underbrush. A few moments later, he saw the same man leave the cabin, hitch up his own dog team, and drive off in the direction of Dawson. King knew that the other man was still inside the cabin, standing guard over Sergeant Preston. The great dog didn't know how he was going to rescue his master, but he sensed that the sergeant was depending on him in this emergency. Meantime, the sergeant was speaking to Whitey. I don't know what your game is, but if you're smart, you'll give up right now and get off with the latest possible sentence. Ah, don't make me laugh. You wouldn't thunder's eating those huskies out there. If you'll untie me, I'll go out and see. Shut up! It's that confounded dog he is, that's what it is. You must be stirring him up. The howling and barking continued without let up. Finally, Whitey jumped up and said, I'll go fix that mutt with the keys. King was lying in wait at the side of the shack. He heard the door open. As Whitey came around the corner of the cabin, the great dog sprang. King's powerful jaws clamped tight on Whitey's gun hand. The crook loosened his grip with a scream of pain, and the gun fell to the ground. Whitey tried to defend himself by grappling with King, but the big husky lunged from side to side, snapping ferociously with his fangs. Finally, the crook stumbled and went down with King on top of him. Inside the cabin, Sergeant Preston heard Whitey yell for help. Good boy, King. Put him down, fella. Don't let him move. He won't hurt you if you don't move. Just lie still. The Mountie's eyes scanned the room hastily. A paring knife was lying on the shelf along with several dirty dishes and other eating utensils. Sergeant Preston struggled to his feet, began hopping toward the shelf. The sergeant's hands were tied in back of him. With difficulty, he raised them to a point high enough to grasp the paring knife. Then he slipped the knife blade in between his hands until it pressed against the rope around his wrists. Slowly and awkwardly, he worked the knife up and down until the last strand of rope parted. That's a relief. Now to cut this rope around my ankles. A moment later, the sergeant was free. He rushed out of the cabin. Now, 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 Mike, Mommy, hurry up. This dog may go to my throat any minute. Sorry, but you'll have to wait till I get my hands on that gun. Right, Whitey's you... gun was lying in the snow. The sergeant picked it up. All right, King, you can let him up now. Good work, fella. No. Hold out your hands while I snap on these handcuffs. That dog. That's better. I'll get back in that cabin. 
Easy, King. Easy, boy. Now, suppose you tell me why King was so interested in that wood box. How should I know what that crazy mutt was up to? All right, if you won't talk, we'll find out for ourselves. Once again, the sergeant and King examined the wood box. King began to sniff and scratch around the bottom of the box. So that said, something's under the box, not in it. Wait a minute, fella, I'll push the box away. As the sergeant pushed the box aside, he saw that it had been covering a small trap door. Now we're getting somewhere, I'll open it. Pretty dark down there. I'd better get the lamp. There was an oil lamp on the table. The sergeant lit it, then returned to the trap door. Keep an eye on that man, King. See that he doesn't make a move while I go down and investigate. As the rays of the oil lamp lit up the small, dank cellar, Sergeant Preston saw a man lying bound and gagged on the bare earth floor. Tom. The man was young Tom Atwood. The sergeant untied the gag, but Tom was unconscious. His parka was soaked with blood. Without bothering to untie the ropes around Tom's hands and feet, the sergeant carried him up the ladder into the cabin and laid him gently on a bunk. Whitey, if Tom dies, I'll see that you and Hagen hang for murder. He ain't dead, he's just wounded. The sergeant untied Tom and then removed his parka and shirt in order to dress the wound. Soon, Tom began to regain consciousness. Uh, Sergeant Preston, and the dickens did you get here? Originally, I came here to investigate a shot King and I heard on the other side of the canyon. Guess it must have been that shot that wounded you. I guess you're right. What happened? Uh, I still don't understand it. I was just going by the cabin. Two men came out and stopped me. One pulled a gun, tried to make me go in the cabin. I told him I had to get to Dawson in a hurry, but he wouldn't listen. Finally, I tried to grab the gun away from him, and he shot me. I think maybe Whitey here can tell us about the motive. What about it, Whitey? If I spill the beans, will you promise to go easy on me? You're in no position to make bargains now, Whitey. The only thing I'll promise is to tell the judge you confessed voluntarily. All right, I'll talk. It was Atwood's cousin that put us up to it. A guy named Paul Lamar. Paul Lamar? That's right. The way old man Atwood's will stands now, Lamar gets everything. Lamar was afraid if the kid showed up, the old man might change his mind. Night was falling when Bull Hagen arrived in Dawson. He gave Lamar a hasty account of what had happened at the shack. So we tied the Mountie up and I hightailed it into town to tell you what happened. <coughs> Bull, this is plenty bad. We'll have to act fast to keep your shirt on, Lamar. If it's a Mountie you're worried about, there's ways of taking care of him. The Mountie will have to die. That goes without saying. It's the inheritance I'm worried about. And what do you mean? Just this. It won't take long before the police start looking for that missing Mountie. In a few days, I'll have Redcoat scouring the whole district. If that dog of Preston should lead him to Whitey's shack, they'll find Tom Atwood. And I won't stand a chance of inheriting the old man's estate. Holy mackerel, I never thought of that. There's only one thing to do, and that is to make sure the old man dies right away. How can you make sure of that? For all you know, he may hang on for another two weeks. For all the doctor knows, he may die any minute. I've got a vial of poison right here that I've been saving for just such an emergency. A little of this in the old man's medicine and he'll never wake up tomorrow morning. You're pretty smart, Lamar. But you still haven't told me what to do about the Monty. Kill him, naturally. Bury his body down in the canyon someplace where no one will ever find it. In the meantime, I'll take care of the old man. Paul Lamar prepared his uncle's medicine, then went upstairs to the old man's room. that you? Yes, Uncle Joe. I brought you medicine. Medicine? Might as well dose me with hogwash for all the good it does me. Oh, now, don't talk that way. Here. Swallow it down and then try to get some more sleep. All right. Don't take that medicine, Joe. Sergeant Preston. What's the idea of busting in here this way? Especially with that dog. My uncle's a sick man. He'll be a lot sicker if he takes that medicine you're trying to give him. What do you mean? Your nephew made the mistake of leaving this bottle of arsenic downstairs. Paul, is this true? It's true, all right. Don't go for that gun, Lamar. I've got your cupboard. In heaven's name, Sergeant, will you explain to me what this is all about? Not a very nice story, Joe. First, Lamar arranged to keep Tom from getting here for fear you might change your will in Tom's favor. When he found that the mounted had entered the picture, he decided it was time for stronger measures. Sergeant, what did you mean when you said he tried to keep Tom from getting here? Would you be willing to see Tom if he did show up? Of course I would. I've been all kinds of a fool. 
But right now I know there's nothing I want so much as to see my boy again before it's too late. All right, Tom. That's the word you were waiting for. Dad. Tom, my boy. Tom, you've been hurt. I'm all right, Dad. The sergeant fixed me up. Have you really forgiven me for running out on you? Forgiven you? I'm proud of you for having enough backbone to stand up to me. <laughs> now, thank heavens, you've come back. Not that it'll do her much good. Don't bother turning her off, Preston. Just drop your gun. Bull Hagen again, eh? That's right. And now that you've dropped your gun, you can reach for the ceiling. You showed up just in time, Bull. How did you know they were here? I was on my way out of town when I saw Preston and the kid turn Whitey over to a constable in front of the jail. I ducked out of sight before they could see me. After they shoved off from the jail, I thought it might be smart to follow. It's a mighty good thing you did. The way things stand, it looks like I'll have to kill all three of them. What? Or how much? How much? What you promised before ain't half of what it's going to cost you to get out of this mess. No one but Sergeant Preston noticed the stealthy way in which King was moving closer to Bull Hagen. Suddenly, the great dog sprang. Oh, no, no, no. I'll take that gun, Hagen. And I'll take care of you, Lamar. Wound or no wound. No. Why, you. So you want some more, huh? All right. No. Get this dog away. All right, King. That's enough, boy. Let him up. Tom, looks to me as though Lamar's had just about enough, too. A moment later, both Bull Hagen and Paul Lamar stood with their hands in the air while the sergeant held them covered. You're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. By thunder, I feel better than I have in the last two months after watching Tom Lamb base that skunk Lamar. If Lamar and a dog had given me more time, you wouldn't be alive to say that. That's right, Lamar. And speaking of time, you and Bull will have plenty of time to meditate on your sins now that this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Listen, all you fellas and girls who'd like to have the tireless energy, the vigor, and stamina of a person like Sergeant Preston. Make the breakfast table your training table. Start every day with a nourishing He-Man's breakfast, including a heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with fruit and milk or cream. Delicious, nutritious wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always buy the big red and blue Quaker package to get the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of murder on the mountain. When King and I started up the eastern face of Mount Polaris, we knew it was a bad day for mountain climbing. The first storm of winter was ready to break. But we also knew that somewhere up on that mountain, there was a party of climbers, and that one of them had murder in his heart. Somehow we had to reach him before he could put his plan into execution. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and...